Today, I'm gonna to be showing you four easy methods on how to convert your S-Log3 footage to Rec. 709 in DaVinci Resolve. Let's get into it. All right, so we're in DaVinci Resolve. I recently did a poll on Instagram. A lot of you want to see certain methods on how to convert S-Log3 to Rec. 709, because for you as a beginner, it could be confusing. And for some of you guys that are pretty dialed in, maybe you know some of these methods. So. A little bit quick about me, I've taken over six different colorist courses from Kazi, Filippo Conti, even Company 3. I've color graded commercials for McLaren, Samsung, Toyota, Silk Almond Milk, Degree Deodorant, so many more, and I've DP'd for those shoots as well. So. We are in DaVinci, we're gonna jump into the color tab, which is this guy right here. And then we're gonna make sure that our color management is set correctly first. So click on the cogwheel in the bottom right corner, go down to color management, color science, DaVinci wide RGB. For our timeline color space, Rec 709, and our output color space, Rec 709, Gamma 2.4. Just match those up. We're not doing anything super crazy or technical today. This is the basics. So I have four different clips. I have a nice little gimbal shot from a resort in Key West that I was DPing. We have a little TV pilot talking head right here. If it wants to go, there we go. So we have a little talking head segment that we lit up really nicely and you'll see once we get the gray going. We have a push in on a slow-mo clip for a clothing line. And lastly, we have a moody boxing scene lit. Let's start with the first clip and our first method, which is contrast and saturation. For our node tree structure, this is my normal go-to node tree. I don't want you guys being intimidated. I want you guys to have a simple one. So we're doing noise reduction, HDR, our conversion node, and our primaries. Everything else within the pipeline, which is all the nodes between these two in and out markers, um, you can do effects, glow, look development, whatever it is that you want. We're keeping it super simple. Now for the first three methods, we're gonna be using the number three node for our conversion. For the last one, it's gonna be our last possible node on the pipeline, which I'll get to in a little bit. Let's start with this one, super easy. We're gonna go expand right here our different waveforms. Now, if your waveforms don't look like this, simply click on the arrow and set yours up. We have parade, we have waveform, histogram, and vector scope. When I'm expanding for the first method, our contrast, notice how everything's growing, how our waveform is going closer towards the highlights and more towards the shadows. We're expanding this image. This is looking pretty good to me. And next I just want to push in some saturation, which we could see on our vector scope growing. Now, just as a quick little tip, these squares are our safety markers. We never want to be pushed past the squares. And even then, if you have a desaturated grade, you probably won't come close to that. Just wanted to give you guys that quick tip. So this is a great starting point for our image. From here, we could go to our primaries because we're never done. The conversion, no matter which method you use, even if you drop on a LUT, you're not done. We have all these unique tools in DaVinci Resolve. That's probably why you guys switched over. It's because of how good it is as color grading. We're not limited to a few sliders or plugins in Final Cut Pro or Premiere no longer. We have so many tools and you need to be taking advantage of them. So if we wanted to, we could go to our gamma. Let me not use my panel and use the mouse. And we could push up the midtones. We could pull down the lift to give it a little bit more contrast. We could push it up. We could add additional notes to change the color of the grass and the sky. We could push warmth into our image. You're never finished with your conversion. I want to stress that enough. So that's method number one. Let's go on to clip number two and I'll teach you method number two. So we're gonna go back to our third node and we're gonna start with a LUT. Now I'm having a LUT pack coming out very soon, but I know a lot of you guys like the Phantom LUT. So let's drop on the neutral Sony LUT. Now, if I toggle it on and off, it's definitely expanding our waveforms. It's changing the color curve. It's definitely doing a lot, but this isn't done. 
There's no way this is done. So what I would do from here now is simply bring up the mids. We could bring the, the blacks down a little bit. We could push more contrast into the image. We could bump up our gain, brighten it up. And then we could push in some more saturation and add vignettes and glows and pop our subjects out more. But look at when I toggle from the conversion on and off, right? And now the primaries, you see how much more happens when you do more work to your image. And this is just the basics. The, the possibilities are endless. So once again, just stressing to you guys, you're not done just dropping a LUT on. Method number three is going to be setting up our curves. So let's X out of here. We're going to click on this if it's not selected, our curves. And then we're going to click on the first box, which is going to bring this up. Now, I'm going to be showing you an S curve, which is another method of pushing in contrast and saturation, but we got to get some things set up. So if your YRGB is not grouped together or linked together, what we want to do is click on the chain so that they're all being adjusted at the same time. We're gonna click on the dots here. We're gonna to go to add default anchors and then right click on the two middle circles. We just need the two other points. So we're gonna pull this up and we're gonna pull this down. And notice how the waveform on the right's expanding. Now we don't want anything drastic because that's gonna make your image look gross and muddy. So we want a nice curve. We want it being smooth. And there we go. Now, after the curve, what we could do is push in some saturation. And there we go. We have our conversion right here. We expanded the waveforms. Nothing's clipping in the shadows of their mids, but we're not done once again. Let's play around some more. So I'm going to move the gain up. I'm going to pull the lift down. I'm going to bring up the gamma a little bit to get more of that. I'm going to add some color boost to it. So you guys are basically getting the point. You're not done with the conversion. It's not all said and done. There has to be more work. So that was tip number three on how to convert. The last tip is going to be a color space transform. This is going to be done on our fourth node or our last node in our pipeline. So I like dragging it out. We're going to click on the effects tab right here and let me turn my favorites off and it's under resolve FX color, color space transform. Now there's two different ways you could do this. Any log footage you can convert into other different color spaces. The most popular is going to be RE log. Let me show you S log three first and then I'll show you RE log. So for input color space, we're going to hit the S button to bring us down to S and we're going to do Sony S gamut three cine. Input gamma S log three. And then notice how dark our image got for output color space and gamma. We're going to just hit R for rec 709. There we have it. This is our CST and this is my go to method personally. From here, go back to primaries. We could adjust saturation, contrast. We could bring up the shadows, whatever else it is that we want to do. Now, let me reset this. And let's go up to a different method. We're going to go to RE wide gamut three and RE log C three. This gives us just a different tone curve. You're not seeing it. It's happening behind the scenes, but it's just giving us closer RE colors. And you could notice difference in the shadows, in the highlights, the ro highlight roll off. It's just a different profile. So whether you're on C log on a Canon, F log, D log, red wide gamut three, doesn't matter. You could use this CST color space transform to transform your log footage into the RE color space. Once again, from here, we could, sorry, I keep using my panel, but we could push in contrast. We could go up with the gain. We could bring up our lift a little bit. We could pull down the gamma. It really depends. This is a moody scene, but we could even do stuff like pushing teal into the shadows. We can push some more warmth into the midtones, and those would be done on 
other individual nodes. So this is basically the four different methods in which is common practice on how to convert your S-Log3 to Rec. 709. If you like this video, let me know in the comments below and also let me know how it is that you're converting your S-Log3 to Rec. 709. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell as I'll be doing more color grading tutorials, Sony content, lighting diagrams and breakdowns, and just filmmaking tips in general. And as always, I'm Jason Anthony. Until next time, guys, peace out.